Hello and welcome back in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Now, two, three days ago, I posted a video where I compared my performance uh, on my PC between Sim Update 3 and Sim Update 4 and showed you all the improvements that this new update may bring. Uh, it's still in beta, the making of this video, so we still have to wait and see for the final product. You seem to really like the video, but there were some people that were, well, not complaining, but <laughs> they said that I missed out some key parts on that video. On uh, Generally speaking, you seem to agree there were three things I should have really shown you. One was my settings. One was a proper stress test of the sim, because we flew around, you know, with no weather, no traffic. Uh, you said, well, why don't you, you know, go to an, a proper third-party airport, switch on all the traffic, uh, real-world weather and all that stuff and see how that behaves. And uh, also some people said maybe they would have liked to see the dev mode activated to get the in-game FPS counter. So I thought, okay, fair enough. I'm going to make a short video and we're going to address those three things. In the meantime, there's been another update to Sim Update 4. So this is a new beta version, but um, it shouldn't make uh, much of a difference. So let's start with my settings. So in the last video, I showed you my uh, PC specs. As you may remember, they weren't great, uh, about three years old. My GPU is a 3080. RTX 3080 and that was really the bottleneck uh, in our tests. So this is what I have here. I use TAA because I really like it. Render scale 100%. I don't use frame generation when I make these videos because I feel like they skew the results. I just want to see what the sim can do on its own. Dynamic settings I have off for the moment. Usually uh, I try to limit my FPS to 60 because I have a 60 hertz p uh, screen and anything above that doesn't make much sense. So here I'm not going to go through everything. You can pause the video if you like. So this is what I use. I'm not going to tell you that this is you know, the best you can do and this is what you should be using. Everybody has you know, a different system. Everybody has different preferences uh, and uh, priorities. For example, for me, glass cockpit refresh rate will always be high because I almost exclusively fly glass cockpit airliners and uh, yeah, uh, high is just a must for me. So this is what I use. As you can see, it's mostly medium. Uh, some of it's high, some of it low. And that's basically it. The one thing I'm still not sure about is the volumetric clouds. I have it on ultra because I just really like the way it looks, but it does, I have to say, drag on my FPS. You know what? Let's just go to high and see if I even notice the difference. Okay, so those are the settings. So we've ticked off, <laughs> we ticked off the first thing already. And now I would say, let's go and do the stress test. Okay, so here we are. I think this is something that would be quite realistic for me to do in order to do a flight. We're at Zurich Airport, which I purchased on the marketplace. Very detailed airport, not incredibly demanding, but you know, it does drop the FPS a little bit. I've loaded in quite a lot of traffic. I use FSLTL and as you can see, there's lots of aircraft around and I loaded in real weather, which gives us this nice cloudy day. Visually already, this looks great. And in terms of FPS, once again, uh, the graph I can see is not recorded by the software. So I will give you the um, uh, statistics now. I have 50 FPS. The GPU is running at uh, around about 97% and the CPU at around about 40%. So once again, the GPU seems to be the bottleneck, at least according to this. Uh, it's always running at you know max capacity, but the FPS are really nice and smooth considering how much stuff is going on in here. Uh, 50 FPS is great. In fact, this is slightly more than what I would get in Microsoft Flight Simulator 
2020. Although the caveat there is that I use higher settings in that sim. So really a one-to-one -one comparison, I would have to up the settings here a bit. But this looks nice, I'm happy with this and 50 FPS, you know, with all of this stuff going on. I think this is great. So I think from my point of view, the stress test that uh, you wanted to see is a success. This is how I would fly. Traffic, real weather, busy airport, uh, fairly complex aircraft here with the Phoenix A320. If we go into the cockpit, let's that load that in. Uh, let's do that. So I'm now seeing, let's just settle in the FPS counter, around about 30 FPS. The GPU is now running at 99% and the CPU at around 35%. So obviously in here the uh, FPS drop quite a bit, but it's still okay, it's still smooth. Uh, I think I could still fly this, you know, and be quite happy. Uh, also, it really depends where you are at the airport. There's a lot of stuff going on around us here. When I'm uh, at the runway, usually the FPS go up by quite a bit. So I would say even though this is a busy environment and the uh, settings are quite high and there's a lot of demand on my fairly old computer, I'm still happy with this. This would be completely unthinkable in Sim Update 4, so in the previous version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, I would be sitting here with, I don't know, 9, 10 FPS, it would be completely unflyable. So I would argue that even this, with this, even, you know, with all this stuff going on, Sim Update 4 is still doing really well. So finally, let's look at the dev mode. The reason why I never use the dev mode is because it drops my FPS quite a lot by about 20 FPS, 15 FPS and then it completely skews the result because the software that shows you the FPS itself uh, causes a drop. But I'll do it anyway because it gives us a bit more information. So again, I'm sitting here at 50 FPS, nice and solid. So when the dev mode comes on now, you know, take the FPS with a pinch of salt they are lowered by the dev mode itself. All right, here we are. So I don't know how well you can see this. The FPS have now dropped from 50 to the low 40s, you know, 41, 42, it's hovering around there. This is because of the dev mode. I haven't changed anything else. For me, the main thing here is at the bottom where it says that the GPU memory is almost at its max. We can also see the main thread is in the orange, but it's not as bad as it used to be. In the past, I remember that was constantly red and uh, we were always main thread limited. It's still not ideal if we look at it, if we look at the threads, but it's way better than it used to be. I do feel like this new update makes better use of all the threads. So the way I see it, maybe, I mean, I'm not an expert with these things, but the way I see it, my bottleneck here is probably the GPU. If I could upgrade that, which is something I am planning to do, I want to replace my 3080 with a 5070 Ti, I think this could um, then bring a real boost in performance here. I will probably then be CPU limited, but that's okay. You know, otherwise you end up in a constant competition between the two and just upgrade here, upgrade there. So this is essentially what you wanted to see. So this is what I'm showing you. Uh, as you can see, even with these settings and in this environment, it's still doing okay, even in dev mode. I'm going to switch that off because it's annoying me. And that's essentially it already. Uh, just a very short video. I just wanted to, you know, respond to your, maybe not criticism, but suggestions in terms of the video I made uh, last time around. So I hope with these new insights into Sim Update 4, you have a better picture. And I hope that, you know, as we go forward, there may be some more improvements. And once this thing is out of beta and released, it will give us the performance boost that we all been waiting for for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. And that's it. I hope you found this interesting and useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.